Welcome to the Chef's Kitchen. I'm your host, Maria Valletta, and we're at the PBS 39 Studios at the Steel Stacks campus in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. And today we're cooking with Chef John Mims of Carmine's Act Two and two up and coming restaurants on Broad Street, Cafe Beignet and Treme, right? That's correct. Sounds exciting. You'll have to tell me about that. What are we going to cook today, Chef? Uh, we're pretty busy today. We're going to do um, a New Orleans favorite uh, beignets. Mm. I've had them it's in New Orleans. New Orleans. New Orleans. At, at Cafe Du Monde, yeah. Yes, of course. And then I'm going to do a sauteed uh, seafood platter, which uh, consists of uh, Louisiana redfish, uh, this little crab meat, little crawfish, and some shrimp. Wow, and looks just great. Basically a Monier sauce. All right, let's All right. hop to it. So let's get started on the beignets. Now, this is a uh, two to six hour preparation as far as uh, letting the beignet batter uh, rest. So For the dough itself. Correct. So we're going to start with some yeast, some water, sugar. <laughs> sugar. And okay. we let that rest for a couple of minutes. So that gets the yeast going. It does. And we yeast have. Love sugar. This is going to yield about 25 donuts. So, uh, or 40 small ones. Ooh, let's have a dessert party. 12 really big ones. <laughs> so, we break the flour uh, in equal parts. And in one part, we're going to add. What kind of flour do you use? This is just uh, soft rising flour. Okay. We're going to add evaporated milk. Excuse me. And <laughs> this is uh, two eggs that are whisked together. Now you could do this in a mixer, but I don't know, I'm kind of primitive when it comes to cooking, so I mix everything by hand, but... Do you really? Yeah. Where was I it? I was reading somewhere that you work 100 hours a week. <laughs> it yeah, it takes a lot. I'm pretty much a one-man show for, for now. That's amazing. And when <laughs> well, do you I expect the restaurants that. to open on Broad Street? Uh, we're looking at May. It's, um, it's being... Um, driven by this guy named Eric Blumenfeld. He's redoing that whole northern Broad Street. Oh, sure. So there's a lot going on, and I'm a small part of it, but hopefully we'll bring a little uh, New Orleans to it. So this is mixed. We have the evaporated milk, the eggs, and half of the flour. We're going to add a pinch of salt, and we're going to add shortening. This is crucial part of this recipe, shortening. That's the secret ingredient. It is. It really is. Shortening. <sighs> So that's how you get all those muscles, huh? <laughs> Working out beignet dough. I love it. So we have half of the flour mixed with the egg mix. And then we're going to work this uh, shortening in. So I'm assuming these are going to be the star of Cafe Beignet, right? Yeah, that's it. We're just serving coffee and, and beignets. Just one type of beignet and coffee and chicory, just like in New Orleans. And are you from? Born and raised there. Wow. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take the uh, yeast, the sugar, and we're going to mix that to half of the flour. If you would be so kind, if you could just wipe that out for me. Oh, sure. And then we're going to take There we go. the mixture. I'm done with that. All right. You know, I really don't like making desserts. I make desserts. I make all my desserts in the restaurant, but this one, I just love watching people eat this. Really? It's, yeah, they just kind of melt into it. It's, <laughs> it's pretty cool. I remember when I had my very first, you say them, beignets, right? Beignets. Yeah. beignets. Um, I got powder all over me. It was a windy day, and I'm eating them outside. <laughs> my lips, I looked like I had white lipstick on from all the powder all over my face. Well, I'm <laughs> curious to see what it will be like at 2 o'clock in the morning with people, you know, <laughs> oh, that's even great. the bars. So what we want to do is we want to spray the vegetable spray in the pan. And the batter is all mixed. And what we're going to do is. That's sticky. Yeah. It is a workout. <laughs> now, that wasn't that hard, was it? No, because you did all the work. <laughs> it was really easy for me. There we go. That's done. Right. And what we want to do is um, just put a towel over this beignet batter, put it in the refrigerator for about two hours to six hours. Stay tuned for
for more with Chef John Mims. We're back with more from the Chef's Kitchen. This is a uh, two to six hour preparation as far as uh, letting the beignet batter uh, rest. The yeast is gonna activate, so um, the longer the better. Cool. Good so tip. this is what it looks like. Finished product. All right, check it out. So we're gonna cut it in some sections. <laughs> now most restaurants have like a, a roller or something like that. No, not you. Little, no. no. So, we're just gonna dust a little flour in there. I love these things. I hate having them in the restaurant because I, I eat them every day. Really? Yes. So. <laughs> My staff, too. All right, so look, that's it. This is the hardest part. So we're just gonna, you don't have to get crazy with it. As far as like, you know, just pieces. So are these on the dessert menu at Carmine's? Actually? Yes, yes they are. Well, I change the uh, dessert menu often because I make everything in the house. I usually keep like four or five. Even the desserts you do all yourself? Everything, yeah. Wow. So that's, that's pretty special. Beignets. We're going to leave that to room temperature, and then we can jump to the, uh, the main course. But when I start my day, I always start with desserts, mm -hmm. you know, because they take the longest. And probably the most planning, too, huh? Definitely. Okay, that's it. I heard you have a really great cinnamon bun bread pudding, too. A sti yeah, a sticky bun a bread pudding. sticky bun bread pudding. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll have to get you to come back on the show and make that, too. I will. Okay, you ready? Let's start on the fish. So when you cut these, these have, like, just just a simple, random freeform. Yeah, you can, you know, big, small, it really doesn't matter. So what we want to do is we want to season the fish. So when you say Louisiana redfish, what kind of fish is it? It's actually a, a channel bass, redfish. We call it, in Louisiana, we call them rat breads because they're smaller. These things can get up to, you know, 45, 50 pounds, but these are from the inner, inner canals of Louisiana, so they tend to be a little smaller. Where do you get your fish from, Chef? Uh, I get it from a local guy for the last 18 years. It's called Bywood Seafood, and, um, he gets everything that I need. Yeah, I haven't Louisiana really fish. come across redfish before. So, so if I'm cooking this at home and I can't find redfish, what would be a good substitute? Um, any kind of bass-like fish. You okay. know, striped bass, grouper, anything like that. So don't be bashful. What is that you're sprinkling this is, there? This is my house blend. Ah. It's Cajun secret. seasoning, and a lot of people think it would be red, but it turns, when you cook it, it has a lot of paprika in it, so it will. What else we'll goes in there? Uh, a little of this, a little of that. Ah, Onion powder that. and garlic powder. <laughs> mm. Okay. Oh, it's really good. It's got a heat to it. Love it. Does. It. All right. So what we want to do is we want to saute the uh, fish and just get a nice brown color on it. This is going to cook rather quickly. So is this a dish you have on the menu at Carmen's Act too? Yeah. I, I do specials a lot. Like, I get really bored, so I tend to do like five or six specials. And when do you have time to get bored? I just don't believe that. <laughs> <laughs> See how this uh, this oil is smoking? Yep. It's going to be a little, it should brown nicely. So you just want to be really careful when you place the fish in the hot oil. This is going to cook rather quickly. I like your method there. Now, some cooks in Louisiana that I've seen, they'll dust it in flour. Mm -hmm. But I've seen that. Yeah. That tends to uh, it, it'll stick to the pan. But in this sauce we're doing today, it's basically a reduction of Worcestershire and this uh, seafood stock. It's a. Uh, it's like muddy water. <laughs> that's funny you say that because it's uh, it's it's. We call it swamp water as well. Um, <laughs> Do you really? Down yeah, there? it's crushed crawfish tails that I brown in butter, and I roast it, and then I'll, I'll reduce it. And most seafood stocks, you just put a boil on it, and then you turn it off and strain it. But I'll actually reduce this by half, and what you're going to get is this really intense, concentrated, concentrated yeah. seafood stock. Yeah, and I love it, and people love it. So this is the sauce is just basically the Worcestershire sauce. 
the, we'll call it muddy water, uh, some lemon juice, a little bit of butter. A little bit. <laughs> so let's flip this fish. I just bought myself a nice fish spatula like that. Mine's yeah, a little I love smaller, these but same shape. See, the fish has a nice color to it. It's got a great color. So that's from the spice mix? Yeah. And the pan being a little hot, too. Sure. So, what we want to do here is we want to cook the fish and then transfer it to a platter. And then we're just going to real quickly finish the sauce with this. And we're going to saute the rest of the seafood. And then we're going to deglaze it with the stock and Worcestershire sauce. And then pile it on. Yep. And then we're going to make some beignets. Stay tuned for more of The Chef's Kitchen. Back with more from Chef John Mims. So, are you excited about the new restaurant? Oh, you yeah. Got going on? I'm going to have a, I'm building a stage. Uh, Eric and I, we're going to put a stage right in the middle of the uh, space. We'll have, we'll have live music about five days a week. That would be so great. Different genres, but uh, we're going to do a lot of jazz, blues. We'll have a couple of rock bands in there, even a classy karaoke. Yeah. Right? But the <laughs> bar the menu, the bar on. menu is going to be really, really cool. And I'm making a cocktail today, one of them that we'll be serving. Ooh, um, a little preview. Yeah. Is it going to be a large restaurant? Lots of seats? The, actually, uh, the bar will have about 80 seats. Um, That's big. In the summer, we can open up the doors, and then we have Broad Street there, and we'll be able to fit about another 80 people out there. Wow. Now, tucked in the, corner, tucked in the back will be a 50-seat fine dining restaurant. And then next door to it will be Cafe Beignet, which is uh, very similar to a a place called Cafe Du Monde in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. um, it's gonna be a very small place. I see us doing a lot of donuts to take out. So our fish, I wanna see if this oil is hot enough to start these beignets. Oh, that's <clears> how <throat> we're gonna fry them, huh? Yeah, we're almost there. How do you know? It started to uh, bubble when I put it in there. Uh, usually, of course, I use a deep fryer at the restaurant, so it's gauged. So I'm just guessing here. This fish mm, looks it like it's done. So good. All we want is to get the shrimp to be a little pink. That crab is beautiful. Don't you do a special dish, dish at the menu with? I use uh, a lot uh, of crab. with crab. Yeah, I like do a crab, crab cake. Cheesecake. Or I something. do a smoked gouda crab meat cheesecake. That sounds amazing. Yeah, it's pretty I'm good. I'm gonna come in just for that. We go through a lot of that. But if I could make a dessert with crab meat, I would. Really? Yeah. Is that your we favorite? We use a lot of it. Yeah. <laughs> I love crab meat. But that's Louisiana, you know? In Louisiana, we, we, we have an overabundance of crab meat and shrimp and You're known crawfish. on the chef's kitchen for your crab meat, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone talks about that. So these shrimp are just about halfway cooked. So let's hit it with a stock. This is going to make a little noise, and it's going to sizzle a little bit. Then we're going to add our crawfish. They're so pretty. They add a lot of color, too, huh? Oh, yeah. They taste so good. And then we're going to, mm. you notice I keep seasoning, layers yep. of seasoning. Layers and layers. So I want a really intense lemon flavor. So I'm, like, digging into the lemon. So are you going past the fifth A little bit, yeah. We're going to add our it's green onions. Colorful. And it's getting more colorful. I love it. Add some Worcestershire. Wow, that's a lot. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, we're going to start adding our butter. It smells so and good. And what we want to do is to get it to where it's, you know, can coat the back of a spoon. What, what would you say are the, the main ingredients in true New Orleans? cuisine, like the, the top like three. The staple is the Holy staple. Trinity, which is um, yellow, red, and green bell peppers, celery, a lot of onion, and a lot of thyme. Really? Thyme? Yeah, I didn't a lot know of that. thyme. And let's start on our donuts. Donut time. Those are going. Yes, they are. <laughs> now, how long do they take? Just, just to the ground, yeah. Up? 
Look at that. They're done already. See, they float to the top. Like little pillows. I love these things. <laughs> and with a good, Dangerous. strong cup of um, coffee and chicory. Coffee and chicory. Mm-hmm. So I guess you'll serve that too? Oh, right. absolutely. I'm going to blend my own, it? actually. You are? Yeah, I do that at Carmine. Check out beignets, And though. it's right in Arbor, right? It is. Right in the heart of Arbor. Powdered sugar heaven. Now, I do savory beignets as well. You do? I yeah, like lobster those. and truffle <gasps> beignets. Ooh. I'll do smoked on dewy and tasso beignets. So how do you do that? How do you get the flavor inside? Well, instead of using sugar, I'm going to use spices. Mm. You want to make the rest of these? Sure. Because I bet you the camera crew will love them. <laughs> Everybody will love beignets. All right. So look, our sauce is almost there. It's looking good, chef. It certainly smells good. It's amazing how quickly these donuts cook the oil. I'm going to turn this off. <laughs> these look so good. <laughs> you can eat these day, night. <laughs> 2 a.m. 2 a.m.? <laughs> yeah, I bet you we'll see a lot of that. All that butter is almost all melted. When that's done and it's fully incorporated, we're good. Now, you notice I'm not serving a starch with that? No, you're not, are you? What I would do is serve it with a nice loaf of crusty bread. Ah, for dipping. For dipping, yeah. No starch. I like that idea. I guess we still need to put our crab in, huh? But it's so delicate. You can put that in now. Yeah? Do. Yeah, you only need a couple of seconds on that. You want it all in there? Yeah, why not? Come on. All right. Juice, too. There okay. Dump it in. <laughs> now, you could thicken this if you wanted, but I, I love it just like this. So do you get the crab meat from the same purveyor? Same purveyor. Mm -hmm. I get all my seafood from him. so fresh. Just take and take all the seafood and throw it right on top of the. All right. Heavy, huh? OK. Let's make a martini and I uh, think we're ready to go. I think I made enough for a couple of people. <laughs> I love it. Right. <laughs> there we go. A southern style feast. Stay tuned for more with Chef John Mims. So let's make a swamp water martini. This is a vodka that I marinate with uh, dry chipotles, jalapenos. You can add that to ice. Love your garnishes here, John. Look yeah, I take this is uh, going to be garnished with. A blackened shrimp and pickled jalapenos and olives that I marinate myself. And thyme. Some fresh thyme. Like you said, that's a staple. Now, this is the catch to the, um, I'm going to float it with a little gin. Are you kidding me? No. <laughs> Vodka and gin. Vodka and gin. <laughs> this is called the swamp water martini. I'm going to float a little gin on that. And, and you're going to serve this drink. We're going to hit it with a little Tabasco. Wow. Done. <laughs> Looks good. And you can eat it, too. <laughs> I think I'm going to skip that, and I want to go right to the beignets. <laughs> Chef, I can't wait to taste this. You created the perfect meal. What do we start with? Ooh, drink. Take a sip of that. All right. Now, I don't usually like dirty martinis, but I think swampy martinis. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds more fun. Mm. <laughs> Got a little bite to it? That's potent. Yes, <laughs> totally. Oh my gosh. I don't know if it's, it can't be the Tabasco. It's definitely got to be your special vodka. Wow. Got try it. Did you gym. try it? No, I'm good. I have to work tonight. Thank you. <laughs> oh, you're going to leave me to drink by myself. Yes, you have to drink all these. Great. I want to get a little crawfish because to me that's just so Louisiana. Mm. Mm. Really good. What do you think? Mm hmm. It's all right. Super rich, super tasty. Let me try a piece of that red fish. Oh, it's so tender. Look at that. Mm. Mm mm mm. mm. 
This is outstanding. Can we eat the beignets now? Okay. You want to go right? I'm sorry. <laughs> I need I need some bread to dip. <laughs> All right. Let me let me pick a nice powdery wow, one. This is going to be messy. This is going to be disastrous. <laughs> All right. There's only one napkin to what. share. Let's share it. All right. Ready? Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> mm. You can have the Your sweet crab dish. meat. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thanks for having me. It's great. You can at least cheers me. I will. <laughs> Thanks, Chef Mims. I can't wait to check out your new restaurants, Terme and Cafe Beignet, and I'll be at Carmine's Act 2 soon. Awesome. Thanks for being on the Chef's Kitchen. My pleasure. The Lehigh Valley's premier hotel, the historic Hotel Bethlehem, is perfect for any stay. With 128 rooms and suites, 24-hour room service, and a fully equipped fitness center, historic Hotel Bethlehem is sure to impress. Inside are two beautiful ballrooms, ample meeting space, and two restaurants by notable chef Michael Adams. 1741 on the terrace, a farm-to-table dining experience, and the tap room, a casual restaurant open all day. On your next trip, stay with us and feel at home at the historic Hotel Bethlehem. Enjoy being on the chef's kitchen again. It's such, it's like a work of art. It's so colorful. Uh, the host is great. The camera crew is phenomenal. And the, the set is always easy to cook in. Love it.